Welcome back to Titanium Man Garage and it's a rainy day in Wisconsin so what better thing to do than to tear down a four-wheeler. So I got this I believe it's 96 it's got some ugly plastics on it uh, somebody did some uh, cheesy repairs it's just kind of nasty looking so I've got a set of uh, 05 plastics over here and I'm gonna throw them on and uh, I'm gonna go through the uh, it's either the clutch that's rattling or Possibly the lifters are, are clanking, so I'm going to go through that and uh, I'll let you guys see how I do. Ah. You guys got it bolted right to the fender. You hear that? My money's on the clutch. Let's hope I'm right. I'm gonna remove the clutch. I'm gonna fire that thing off, see if the noise goes away. That'd be sweet. So if you guys have never seen uh, a clutch removed, I made a homemade uh, clutch pulling tool, three-quarter threaded rod. Um, you can buy these off of eBay now, but at the time, I couldn't find one. I just run the bad boy in. She should just pop right off. Should, I said. <laughs> Sometimes they stick on. A piece of cake. Hey, you can get away with just replacing the clutch. That'd be sweet. Clutch is removed. I'm gonna hit the key and see what happens. See if it makes that noise. You listen to that. Sounds a lot quieter now. A little banging away. Sweet. I don't have to do nothing with the timing. Knock on. Thanks to my parts guru in Milwaukee. Uh, you know who you are if you're watching this. Uh, thanks for hooking me up with the clutches. You guys are in Wisconsin. And uh, need parts. That's a guy to get a hold of. I won't name drop because he wants me to, but you'll find him on Facebook. All right. See how she sounds now. This is a nice, nice tight clutch. Problem solved. Woohoo! Giddy up. Alright, I got uh, this changed out right here, so now she should be ready to go. Let's put her right on the seat. too shabby and yes I have done this before I stuck a it was a sportsman uh, 600 plastics on a sportsman 500 I'm gonna get that bolted up so I got the back on um, the only modification I had to do was on the footboards uh, those uh, holes would line up the footboards on the flares so I had to drill them up and uh, now we're going to get the, get rid of this ugly Frankenstein front end. 
And there you have it. All bolted up. Got the nice fender flares on there. Now it looks like a 2005. So what I did with the cover is uh, I got her painted up black for the headlight cover. But yeah, man, she's turning out good. So if you ever want to take a 2005 plastics and put it on a 1996 or 97, I think this is a 97. Go ahead and do it. It can be done. All right, so the, uh, the 97 project's going pretty good. Got the plastics on. Uh, replaced the clutch. And uh, now I'm having issues with the four-wheel drive. So every machine I do, I always got to laugh because uh, the way guys fix things once in a while that don't really know what they're doing, um, it's actually kind of comical. So I had did the other side. Uh, I went through the wiring first. Underneath the hood, I made sure uh, I had power going to the magnetic coils on the hubs, and I did. So I know I got power down there, and I know there's an issue going on with the uh, Hillard clutch. So what I'm doing is I'm replacing them. I got uh, I got some uh, from my buddy in Milwaukee, and uh, yeah, I already did one side, and I got her good. I'm gonna tear the other side and. Uh, let you guys see what I find. When you want to take that uh, hub off, first thing you want to do is take uh, your brake caliper off. Just two uh, half inch bolts. Set them off the side. That other way, kind of hang it up so it'll get damaged somewhere. And you take, uh, this is a 97, so these have uh, bolts on it, screws in here. Alright, here's a trivia question for you guys. What kind of fluid do you put in your hub? I mean, yeah, you can buy the player stuff, but when it comes to aftermarket, what do you want to put in there? Before I answer that question, I'm going to show you the inside of that hub. Look at that. It's got grease. It's all greased up. That's like a big no-no. Um, and the reason why is because dirt can get in there. Stick to your grease. And... Uh, you're just gonna have a big, it's gonna be packed with dirt, mud. You don't want that. What you wanna use is either your Polaris brand or you can use uh, automotive uh, ATF, automatic transmission fluid. There'll be guys out there that'll debate that, but back in the 80s, Polaris used to put uh, ATF in their their transmissions. <clears throat> there you go. Get that pulled out. There you go. Now what I like to do is uh, grab a clean towel or something and lay all my uh, clutch parts out when I'm taking this apart. that you got a washer and a bearing this is all grease stuff if you use a little magnet there's your bearing clean that off you want something uh, really thin like ATF uh, just enough to lube it and to help the, uh, the Hillard clutch engage and if you get any dirt in there it's not gonna damage anything and you change that yearly <clears throat> so that's 
So just slide off. Yuck. What a mess. You got your other bearing. It comes off. There you go. The other one. Clean that up a little bit. And your fresh rig. This comes off all together. <laughs> oh my god. For those of you that have done this before, you might know why I'm laughing. I really hope this is turning out on the camera. There's no metal plate on the back of this. Here's your magnetic coil. So let me show you what's supposed to happen. Got the key on, got the four wheel drive engaged. You got this metal plate. That's supposed to bite in the teeth there. Yeah. Electronics, when the four wheel drive button's pushed, this acts like a magnet. And it grabs this plate and it spins your, your hub. So, the guy put it together wrong. <laughs> and it wore the back of the... Put some damage in the back of the clutch. So I'm going to replace that. I'm going to put this back together. Make sure you line those teeth up. If they're not lined up, you're going to squish them. That don't feel right. It's back in there. So I think I know what happened. I think the guy replaced this hub because uh, this thing is way bigger than the other side when I filled it. And uh, that's probably why that bearing didn't fit. So when I got this thing, this thing was rocking back and forth. That's why I wanted to rip this apart. So now we want to put some ATF uh, to lube the Hillard clutch and the hub. I just use a synthetic automatic transmission fluid. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of spin it so it pours out a little bit. And I know it's full. Yeah, it does make a mess. Go ahead and turn that back on. Usually what I do is I fill it two or three times and then I'll rock it back and forth. You see how tight that hub is, it's not moving anywhere. So we're good to go. Here's a better shot outside. Got a little more room in the out of the garage. Painted that top. Has them pretty nice. Now she just needs a bath. So there you have it. Thanks for watching, and like always, till next time. And once again, if you uh, if you like the video and you haven't subscribed, I've got uh, plenty of Polaris repairs. <laughs>